Hello and welcome to Security. This is Cesar. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up SSH agent forwarding to connect to a private instance on AWS Trail Bastion host. So to connect to an instance running on AWS, you need a private key. And to connect to an instance running in a private subnet, because there is no access from the internet, one of the ways to connect is by using a Bastion host. And to, one way to do this connection securely is through SSH agent forwarding. And this is such that you don't have to save the private key of the private instance on the Bastion host because the Bastion host is accessible over the internet and thus it could be susceptible to different types of attacks. So I'm going to be creating a whole network setup for the demo. So, but if you just want to see the part of the credential forwarding, I'll leave a timestamp and you can go straight to it. So this is going to be the setup for today. We have a VPC with two subnets, a public subnet and a private subnet. So private, we have a private instance, which is not going to be um, reachable from the internet in our private subnet. And we have a bastion host, which is reachable, which is going to be reachable from the internet. And also the NAT gateway, which gives the instance and private subnet um, access to the internet for updates and patches and we have the internet gateway which gives internet um, access to the whole VPC. So let's go right ahead and begin the setup. So the first thing I'll do is pull up the VPC console. Now I can go to my VPCs and create a VPC. I'll give it the name Security VPC. And for the CIDR, I use 192.168.0.0 and a slash 16. You can leave the rest as default and just create VPC. Okay, now we can confirm that the VPC has been created. We can next create the Internet Gateway to give internet access to the VPC. So I'll call it Security Internet Gateway and just create it. And next I'll attach it to the VPC. Click on Attach to a VPC. I'll select my Security VPC and Attach Internet Gateway. So next I'm going to create the subnets for the VPC. I'm going to create a private subnet and a public subnet. I'll select the VPC, which is the security VPC, and um, I'll create the first subnet, which is going to be the public subnet. I'll leave it in availability zone USA 1A, and I'll, I'll give it the CIDR I'll give it the zero dot zero slash twenty four, and I'll create another subnet for which for the private subnet, and leave it in the same availability zone. I'm not going to do any um, redundancy. Normally, as best practice, you should have subnets in at least two availability zones. But since this is just a and a demo, I'm just going to create one private subnet and one public subnet. So I'll give you the CIDR 192.168.1.0 slash 24, and i create the subnets. So the next thing to do after creating the subnets is to create a route tables. And by default, one route table is um, created for the subnet. So I'm just going to sort by VPC now and look for that route table. You can see this is the route that has been created by default for the security VPC. And by default, it's, it's private, which means it has only local routes. It doesn't have any route to the internet. And um, the subnets that I created are implicitly um, associated with the, with this route table. And except you explicitly, explicitly associate them with another um, route table, they will, they will be associated with this route table. So I'm just going to give it the name Security VPC Private. So 
and then I'll create another out table for the public. And I'll give it the name as security VPC public. I link it with my VPC, security VPC, and create route table. So this subnet is also private until I give it a route to the internet. And um, so first thing I'll do now is edit the subnet association and explicitly associate the public subnet to this subnet. And you can see that has been done. I will then also explicitly um, associate the private subnet with the private route table. So I select the private subnet and save association. So now I have it explicitly associated. So next, in order to give internet access to the resources in this public subnet, I'm going to attach a route to the internet gateway. So add a route to which says um, any address that's not local, send to the internet gateway. So I'll save, save that. Next thing we'll do is to create a NAT gateway and attach to the private route table. And this will be for uh, instance in the private subnet. So I'll click on NAT gateway. NAT gateway is just create, create a NAT gateway, give it a name. It's a security NAT gateway. And I'll select the subnet as well. I'm going to place it in the subnet, the public subnet for the VPC because it needs um internet access and not get any internet access so I'll select the public subnet for the security security bpc i'll leave the connectivity type as public and i'm going to allocate an elastic ip address and now create a NAT gateway so next thing i'll do with the NAT gateway created is to um attach a route in the private route table so I'll go to route tables, uh, attach a route in private route tables. So private instances in the private subnet can connect to the internet through the NAT gateway. So I'll add a route here for any address that's not local it will, it will be sent to the NAT gateway by default. And I save changes. And you can confirm the route has been added successfully. So with that, we're done with what we need to set up in the VPC console. We can now go to the EC2 console and set up the EC2 instances. So to begin creating the instances, I first of all make sure I'm in the same region with the VPC I created. Then I click on instances and click on launch instances. The first instance is going to be the private instance. So I give it the name private instance. So I'll leave it as the default Amazon Linux 2 AMI and T2 Micro instance type. Next, I'll create a key pair for SSH access. I just give it a name, then I can select the .ppk format. Since I'm going to be using using it with Putty, so Putty is an SSH client that you can use on Windows. And um, if you don't know how to set up Putty, I'll leave a link here where you can go um learn how to set it up. So next, I'll go to network settings. Make sure it's in the security VPC and in the private subnet i'll leave auto assign public ip as disabled and i'll create a new security group and give it a name private security group so i can also give it a description just showing that it controls access to the private instance in the private subnet
So for the rules, I'll leave the security group rules as default for now. And I'll leave the rest of the settings as default as well. And click on launch instance. So if you click on view in all instances, you see that the instance has been created and it's it's um, booting up. So I'll create the second instance, which is going to be the Bastion host. So first of all, I'll give you the name Bastion host. Leave it as default in terms of instance type. And also I'll create a key pair now, which is going to be the Bastion host key pair. And I'll also select the .bk format and then click on create key pair. So next I can change the network settings, click on edit. I'll ensure it's in my in the security VPC I created, but this time it's gonna be in the public subnet, which it causes the bastion host. I'm going to enable um, assign public IP and I'll create a new security group, which is gonna be the bastion host security group. And um, I could also put in the description that it's allows access to the bastion host from anywhere. So the default rule already grants that access from anywhere, SSH access from anywhere. And I don't need to change that, I can leave it as default. And um, I can also leave the rest of the settings as default as well and click on launch instance. The bastion host has been launched now. I'll just give a couple of minutes for both instances to finish booting up and I'll continue. So now with the instances created and booted up, I'm going to go back to the security group for the private instance and add a rule that allows the security access only from the bastion host. So I'll edit the inbound rules for the private instance security group. I delete the default rule that was there and add a new rule, which is going to allow SSH access from the Bastion host security group. And that's going to be the only inbound rule for the security group. So next I'll pull up the patient application, which is usually installed when you install PoT. And it is needed to be able to forward SSH keys with Putty. So I'll locate patient in the taskbar menu, right click and click on view keys. And here I'll click on add key to add the key I want to forward. So I'll select and add the keys I just downloaded. That is the bastion host key and the private key. And now I can pull up the Putty app to connect to the bastion host. So first of all, I'll go to the SSH settings, select Alt and make sure the box next to allow agent forwarding is selected. So I can now go back to the um, session and connect to the bastion host. So I'll go back to AWS and copy the IPv4 address of the bastion host. And now I can paste it into OT and connect. So I click on open to connect, then select yes to continue. Oh yeah, I have to specify the user here because I did not specify the user along with the IP address. So the default user for Amazon Linux 2 instances is easy to user. I specify it and I'm into the bastion host instance. Yeah, of course the bastion host instance has internet access. So I can just confirm that by pinging google.com and you can see a response. So next, I'll test credential forwarding by connecting to the private instance from the bastion host. So the default user is also going to be easy to user. And I can get the IP address from um, AWS. So I copy and paste the IP address and yes to continue connecting. And voila, we are in the private instance. So thanks to the NAT 
gateway, we should have internet access from the private instance. It is not reachable from the internet, but it still needs access to the internet, especially for patches and updates. So we can test that by running the ping as well, and we can see that the ping is successful. So in this video, we've successfully set up and tested SSH agent forwarding, um, which helps us connect securely to an instance in a private VPC through a bastion host without having to save the SSH key on the bastion host. So this video shows how to connect using the Windows host, and I was going to also show how to connect using the Linux host as well, but the video was getting too long, so I'll just do that in the next video. I'll be sure to link it to this one once I'm done with it as well. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll get to them. So I'm going to leave all the resources running because I'll still need them for the Linux host demonstration. And um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.